Hello, listeners. Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network, and I want to take just a quick moment to tell you about another show on our podcast network designed specifically for all the education technology enthusiasts out there. The High Reg Geek podcast is a deep dive into the world of educational technology and its transformative impact on the student experience. Geek out each week with host Dustin Ramsdell. His conversations are a mix of engaging storytelling, expert analysis, and a genuine passion for all things higher ed and tech. Whether you're an educator or an administrator or just someone passionate about the intersection of technology and education, this podcast promises to deliver content that's both enlightening and entertaining. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or by searching The Higher Ed Geek wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, and welcome to Generation AI, the podcast where we demystify artificial intelligence in the world of higher education. I'm your host, Artis Kadu, and joined with me today is JC Bonilla. Hey, JC, how's it going? I'm doing good, Artis. In transition mode, as you know, August becomes a family trip. So in that last round of, do we have enough bags? Are the bags too heavy? Where are the kids going? How we get into the airport? But looking forward, the August, I don't know, agency vibes in Turkey. So super excited about that. Yeah, that's right. Every year you go to Turkey and um, that's what your other better half is from. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we go to this area in Turkey called Bodrum, for those of you who know that area. And we've been, we've been doing that since COVID. It's, it was one of our COVID outlets. And then August has become Bodrum um, August. So yep, the kids love it. You know, there's so many memories that we build there. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, you have a little ones for sure. I'm sure they love the summer there. And what about you? What's new in artist camp? Lots of stuff are new. So we're recording this episode on July 31st. August starts tomorrow. Uh, My kids are already in school because they go to year-round schooling. So uh, we've been kind of heads down and kind of continue to work on the business. So lots of stuff has been happening here from the business side. Things are things are moving along. But I'm really excited for, for this episode today because there's been a lot of news uh, around uh, Meta and open source and Llama 3.1. And I would love to spend some time today to kind of discuss this a little bit more. In the past, we've talked about open source and Uh, specifically Llama and how Facebook is approaching this and some of the other open source models out there. But it's it's turning out to be a little bit more than who's producing the better open source models. And it's turning out to be where Meta is thinking about this the most holistically. So uh, just to rewind, we'll talk about Llama 3.1 today. We'll talk about uh, how fa- uh, you know how uh, Meta and, and Zuckerberg specifically think about open sourcing these large language models that are at the same level as the OpenAI and Anthropic models, and also how they're incorporating them into parts of their products with the AI Studio that they just released. So now you can do you know you can use your favorite apps, which I know it's Instagram. Instagram is that your? Oh no, sorry, uh, WhatsApp. Um, oh, what's up, uh, user? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can create your own JC AI personality in there. So this way you can answer all your text messages from your family and th- you don't have to do them on your own. <laughs> That's going to be great for my cousins. You know how many jokes I get from my Costa Rican family and I just need to pretend that I like it or actually read them. So teach me, my friend, how do I install these AI studio <laughs> in my WhatsApp? Well, so let's start with Llama 3.1. We've talked about this before. Facebook, or rather Meta. I keep I keep referencing Facebook. I don't know why in my head. Well, obviously, Meta uh, will have to stick a little bit to the naming convention. But uh, Meta had released Llama 3.0 a while back. They had teased us a little bit about 3.1 the smaller models. And then, you know, recently, mid-July, they released Llama 3.1. And a few interesting things about this 
It includes a 405 billion parameter model, which is the largest open source AI model available to date. Until the release of one of the other competitors. But as of right <laughs> now, you have the trophy uh, meta for the most parameters. By the way, that's such a ridiculous amount of parameters. Right. It's pretty, it's pretty large. The, the interesting thing here is that, you know, some, some details here. He was trained using over 16,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs uh, and more than 15 trillion tokens. Uh, so essentially, only large entities like Meta could pull this off because of the amount of time that it requires and the amount of infrastructure it requires. Or or you can also say it requires probably the electricity and power consumption of the entire Caribbean islands uh, <laughs> to, to basically train this because it's a gigantic amount of power. Exactly, exactly. But as consumers for us, like, what is that? Like, what do we get out of it, right? One of the nice things about this is that it's a really long context window, 128,000 tokens context window. Uh, the multilingual support is amazing with French, German, Hindi, Italian, Spanish, kind of broadening capabilities across di different regions. And then it's really fine tuned for tool use, meaning that companies like Element 451 and other companies can actually take these models and say, we can now put this as the engines behind uh, the ability to, to kind of embed them in different products a lot easier so the cost goes down significantly and the most important part is the benchmarking against the state of the art models like GPT-4 and Cloud 3.5 now llama 3.1 405 billion <laughs> 405b it is in par if not actually ahead in terms of the benchmarking of GPT-4 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is amazing. It is the first time that we're seeing a open source model compete and be better than the closed source models or the frontier models from those companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the punchline, right? Open source, so available for, uh, to the world at no cost. And right now, today is the number one performance genetic AI infrastructure LLM type of thing, right? So. It's fantastic. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, I mean, there's other models that are open source. For example, Mistral came out and they said, hey, we also have a really good model that we open sourced right after. But this is really truly open in the sense that anybody can take this and they can use it, you know, they can use it in their products. They can actually use it to create synthetic data. And this is, we're seeing more and more of this. We talked about this before where these large models and this very frontier models are, have the capability of creating synthetic data so you can train other more specialized models around it. And it's really, really uh, cool when you start thinking about like, well, how does Mark Zuckerberg think about this release? Like, why is he betting on open source? Like, that's a, that's a big question. So now you're seeing the camps of open source and closed source models becoming really, really close together and companies saying, hey, we don't want to be locked down necessarily to one of those model providers and the cost that comes along with it. So with Llama 3.1, we're getting, basically it's this, these capabilities are getting commoditized, right? That's, that's the idea here. And one of the things that catches my eye, right? It's, it's readiness to the marketplace, that ecosystem, this idea of strategic partnerships that it's 25 partners already in the uh, ecosystem. So it's AWS enabled, obviously NVIDIA, Databricks, Dell Azure, Google Cloud, Snowflake, and so forth. Basically, it's just a, for those of us who will need to grab this type of infrastructure, it's really unimportant. What has happened, Artis, is that, oh my gosh, you need to slow down and say, do I really want to invest in an open AI type of AI technology strategy, right? Because this is too good. If anything, you know, it's the best one at the moment. So it's really, really interesting and, and good for the Zuckerbergs and uh, John LeCun for bringing this to all of us. So, I mean, that is a very good point, right? So what's happening here is not that the, the foundational research is not just saying, oh, we're going to open source the foundational research, but what they're doing now and, and what, what Mark is doing and Mark Zuckerberg is doing is essentially saying, we want to build the Linux of 
uh, AI models, if, you know. So essentially, they're like, these things are going to be commoditized, and we believe in the open source process, and we want to build the Linux part, and we want to build all the infrastructure. So it doesn't matter if this thing is running on the AWS, GCP, you know, Databricks, wherever it's running, on Azure, uh, we're essentially building the tooling around it, and we're building all of the capabilities. So this can be integrated into workflows and it can be integrated into everything else, which makes it uh, really, really attractive for, for a lot of folks that are building on top of it. Have you used it already at Element? Thinking about it, where, where, is, where are you as a CEO and tech lead on adoption here? Yeah, no, so we're, um, we're using it for certain things, uh, for certain small things right now. The, the, the problem for us right now is the inference speed. So we're okay with using OpenAI's Frontier GPT-4 models because it's the multimodal and uh, the multimodality part is really interesting for us. But we're also using Anthropic Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and we're testing and using um, the, the open source, but we just need very fast inference. So going to infrastructure where the inference is really fast because we need like we need the lowest latency in terms of some of the responses that we're getting back. So right now we're still evaluating some different cloud providers or some different inference providers to to figure out how to best incorporate this as part of the ecosystem. Llama is is a little bit slower for us right now gotcha. that inference. Okay. So we're we're figuring out how to find better and faster inference capabilities. So I know that. For example, Grok, which is a... Uh, That's the Musk, Elon Musk's... Um... No, not with a Q. This is a different one. This is a different company that basically can run LLMs at a very, very high speed. Uh, it's, a, it's a chip oh company. So we're going into a rabbit hole here, but, but yes, we're, we're on top of it. <laughs> All right. So take me out of the rabbit hole. Tell me about this studio, because what, you, what we're learning is that this available... It's built in a partnership ecosystem. It's performing at the its very top. And then it has additional features that if I just understand this correctly, no tech skills required to start benefiting from that. Is, is that right? What this AI studio is going to be doing? Well, so this is the different, you know, of course, they're releasing all these foundational models. They're making it available for everybody. And then everybody's building products on top of it. So so now you can access this in a, in a lot of different places. So if you're running a chatbot or a product. Which means coders, programmers, back backend people with very sophisticated skills, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're 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 going to see. So what that benefits from a, let's say, a higher education or from a consumer perspective, it means that you're going to get like cheaper AI products. You're going to get much more capable AI products. So if you're seeing AI, AI writing or anything around AI in some of the products, because this model is cheaper and and faster and better. Then the front, you know, even to the frontier models, you're going to see better reasoning. You're going to see better AI, and a part of that is the productization, how you put it into a product, and that's what Meta is using. Is that they are using these models as part of their products. And remember, we talked about the WhatsApp AI in the past, but we also talked about when. Uh, Meta introduced the AI assistants, which were the celebrity assistants, right? The personas, remember, with Snoop Dogg and so on and so forth. So this was uh, something big, but that actually felt flat. So those personas that were part of the social media. So essentially, you can friend an AI persona on on social media, but they were celebrity personas, and it kind of fell flat. So what Meta has done, they introduced what they're calling the AI studio, which allows you to create your own personas right now, essentially allowing you to place yourself or to interact with other AIs and chat with them. And you can build them essentially with no, no skills. The idea is very similar to GPTs. So if you're familiar with OpenAI's GPTs, now, this AIs are very similar to GPTs, but they are plugged into the different apps and social apps in 
the meta universe. So they're plugged into WhatsApp. They're plugged into the different uh, Instagram. Exactly. Exactly. Hey there, it's Mallory, chief strategist of Enrollify. Higher Ed is facing a leadership crisis. The demands on today's college and university leaders are skyrocketing, and talent is leaving the industry at an unprecedented rate. New leaders like you are emerging, but no one is getting the proper training to be successful. Well, Enrollify is here to change that. Our new course, Lessons in Leadership, taught by Dr. Kerry Phillips, will prepare you to be a confident, empathetic, and effective leader. From systems thinking to adaptive leadership, building culture to handling difficult decisions, this comprehensive online course is perfect for new and aspiring leaders. Don't wait. The course starts September 9th, and for a lucky group of 26 students, we have the option to add interactive sessions with Dr. Phillips for personalized guidance. Visit enrollify.org to learn more. Yeah, I'm seeing the the options on the on the avatars here, and it's kind of like I don't know when when you did your setup of your first computer. Think about a, a PC or or an app, right? That it kind of asks you to pick that login, I'm sorry, that icon. And many times you see a ball or a cat and things like that, or you can start putting your own picture. This is basically taking that to 2024 with the idea that these avatars or these characters, right, are going to be fully functional in a, in a way of like speaking and probably moving and whatnot. But I'm seeing the book nerd, guess my sign, things of that sort. Uh, so it's very, 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 very nice. Um, I like it. I like it. And it could be you. You can be an avatar, right? I guess um, so I'm also seeing that I can create an extension of my own self or I can create a caricature version of myself or even go classical with some type of David like, I'm sorry, not David like. Oh my gosh, who is the artist who did the David? Um, Michelangelo. Michelangelo like <laughs> type of art. Um, <laughs> it's that guy. Yes, it's that guy. It's that guy. It's that guy. <laughs> so, are you going to create a Bonilla AI? Uh, I'm telling, look, I am in four or five family WhatsApp threads that are all basically just, you know, noise. Uh, like every Three months, there is something that is so meaningful that you have to read. Everything else is jokes and like things of that sort. So yeah, I need to be part of the family without them thinking that, you know, I just don't read that. So I'm very excited about this. I'm going to create a version of myself that is a family-oriented collaborator of memes, jokes, and Costa Rican Spanish. Let's see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so this essentially is, I mean, these chatbots can, or the, we call them AIs, they're personal AIs, they call them. So they have created different personas, but they also, you can customize it on Instagram content to talk about like different topic. They, you can avoid different topics. So, you know, for those of us who are like really, you know, thinking about, well, I, I never want to comment on politics. I never want to comment on certain things. So like you can, you can customize all of those things. Uh, uh, you can have you, link sharing in there and you can provide it some context and you can do all of those pieces. And then you can, uh, it can actually talk directly with humans in chat threads. So this is the part that you're really excited about, right? It's not like it's talking to other AIs. It's not just talking to you, but it can actually respond to other people on your behalf and, and other threads as well. Yeah, I'm looking at the personal chef AI. So you can come and say, hey, can you give me some cooking ideas and recipes for dinner each night? I'm starting to like that, that type of fun and simple creation of, of I guess, modern day hacks and AI helping you. So very good, very good. Yeah. I mean, if you were, um, I forget who who was it, but oh, I, I believe, was it the CEO of Tinder or the CEO of Match.com? I'm not sure, but essentially they were commenting that everybody's going to have an AI version of themselves that they're going to send out to date. And they're going to say, okay, go respond to all of these messages on on the dating apps and here's my personality and here's all the things. So so you go ahead and you qualify people and you you do all the the small chatting and all those pieces and then <laughs> and then come back or or give me a summary or or you manage those interactions. So I, I see this as being very similar. 
I have so, so many issues with that. I guess I was born in the 1600s when it comes to Korean dating. When, you know, I'm being married for 17 years. So that means that my last date was, so basically it's been like 20 years since I, since I had a date. Do it. All right. Without technology enablement, a date is what I did on a weekend. Like I couldn't do eight dates right now. You tell well, me you went, not... you went to the bar or you went to a club or you went to somewhere yeah. and then you had to do the whole song and dance and you had to do small chit chat and you had to kind of. And if it sucked and if it sucked, you basically sucked it up. You stay there right <laughs> now. Is that, is that even a date? It's a pre-date. I, you know, I hear all these youngsters or people single going into like coffee shops we might get some hate mail for this or we might get some some comments so maybe we should <laughs> look everybody if you are feeling that hate i'm just 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 want you to know i feel it's super hard now because it's very transactional and before you know why artists and this is where I, like we can turn it around with technology enablement what you're trying to do is put yourself in a place of who truly i am right, right. because what happens in a day and things like that it's like an interview like you're not you're basically you know, it's a stage and you're trying to pretend who you are. Uh, and, and then there's like all these signals, food and music and apparel. And then do you like me? You know, like, so all of a sudden, like you're blocked and you, maybe you're not showing your true awesomeness, right? But let me, with technology, we get that. And it's basically a combing of you. You're going to fit this person better, right? All I want to is it's hard. And today, this very quick transactional stuff, I don't think it's working for anybody. So if AI is going to solve, uh, help solve that, all about it. Which brings me to, we should definitely do an episode on AI in love. You know, see what, see that, we'll see, we'll see where that takes us. All right. Well, you have to do the research for that one. I, I will happily do the research for that one. We're going to have a lot of time while I'm in Turkey. <laughs> Excellent. So going back to these assistants, dating or even interacting with other people can be one of those primary use cases. You won't be very long until we actually see a lot of these AI assistants kind of representing yourself, kind of going out there and doing some of the things that they, they might have goals in mind and, and so on and so forth to do those things. So what we're seeing with AI, uh, with uh, basically AI Studio is using Llama 3.1. And the reason um, that it's even possible to do some of these things, why that's significant is because the model is more sophisticated. It's able to do a lot of reasoning. It's able to basically compete and, and be at the frontier. So it's one of the most advanced AI models out there. So it's able to represent people and personas a lot better. Hence, now you get these capabilities that AI or rather Meta is putting into this AI studio. So any other reactions to this? <laughs> oh, just the last one. Um, I just actually logged in and started doing um, the AI Studio tutorial type of thing. So I'm creating my first character, and he recommended chair. Basically, hello, I'm a folding chair. That's the character it basically is assigning to me. A folding chair. Oh, okay. You get sat on a lot. Is that is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. A folding chair. Hmm. By Patrick Sito, because what you start seeing is recommendations. So anyway... Um, very interesting. And all I can say is I'm excited about this and how it's the product strategy of the Linux of AI. Love that. I think it's really good. The complement on the ecosystem with third parties, but how it's been very designed for the product family within uh, Meta, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, and Messenger. I, I think it's a good strategic rollout. So good for them. Good for us. We'll get, we get to benefit. And artists, I'm looking forward Hi, I'm excited that you're going to start talking to chair. To well, chair. Going on one to one. Every time, yeah. Wait, wait, is that chair <laughs> of the board or it's just a physical chair? It's a chair, like a folding chair. <laughs> it, it looks like a cheap folding chair. Okay, well, that's really interesting. We got we to gotta take a look at that for sure. I'm going to know when I'm talking to the real JC and when I'm talking to chair. So. I know. How do I teach an AI to screw up words and confuse them? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. All right, man. Well, this has been this has been great. We like we've said, we're gonna keep on following this uh, advancements that are happening. Really, really exciting to see this evolution of how open source is actually becoming more and more of a bigger player in this space. And you're going to see a lot more products being built on top of these and much more capabilities being added on top of this. Um, Meta has not stopped releasing open source. As a matter of fact, 
as a as some as a geek um i uh, and someone who used to do a lot of kind of computer computer graphics or av type uh stuff or even using things like after effects spend a lot of time doing rotoscoping or kind of the idea of masking objects out so you can move them around and kind of overlay them do things like that and what happened yesterday was that meta also released their next generation uh what they call meta like segment anything meta segment anything 2 so essentially it's a model that can track and look at any part of a video and can track that object can track any object and can mask them out in video so it's pretty amazing uh, what they're doing here with these different models and what they're putting out there in the open source. I remember a few years ago, I was talking to a company that did sports. Basically, they had a platform where you do sports recruiting and you put in your profile on that for college uh, recruiting. So essentially for college recruiting or for even professional sports, where you go in and as an athlete and you put in your videotape of yourself up there or maybe there's games that are taped from your team. And then they had this software where you can tag different players and then you can see, like you would kind of clip different videos of those players. So you can automatically do some of that work. And then you can see them moving around. Now with the Olympics as well, these segment anything, you can technically uh, very easily say, track all the players in here or track number 22. And that model will actually give you the position of player 22, where it is on the screen the whole time or where the ball is on the screen the whole time. So it's really, really amazing. In real time, you can do these things now that, you know, a few years ago, this was just, you know, cutting edge technology that there was, you know, lots of IP went into it and whole products being built around it. Now they are open sourcing it as well. So very very interesting what's happening with Meta and, and how they're putting all this open source out there, which is which is really, really cool. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Like the fact that some of these technologies literally already were only available on sectors like, you know, defense, you know, counterintelligence, all these type of things. And now that I can do it so I can track my kids, I don't know, movements in daycare with other uh, toddlers is so, so um, incredible, right? Yep. Well, with that, uh, we are wrapping this up. JC, hope you have an amazing trip in Turkey. Thank you. We don't know uh, if JC will probably join us on the next episode or not. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But we'll make sure to keep you as part of the introductions. So even if I haven't joined, I expect you to introduce me as a spiritual the spiritual vibe I will be there. It just so happens that in the next few weeks I'll be traveling, everybody. So I may not have good interconnect a connection, but you can all, I can always phone in the chair. We're gonna we're gonna have chair view. We're gonna get you get in the chair. I just want to remind everybody where I go in these coastal towns is still DSL. DSL. I don't think people know what that is anymore. We'll do a whole episode of that, but uh, it's it's not high speed internet. I'll I'll get through, but maybe some of these you know, high bandwidth applications for uh, video, audio, and whatnot. They're not so friendly there. Either way, everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Please check out the work that Llama, the work that Meta and the Zuckerbergs are doing. It's just incredible that this type of technology is available to our fingerprints. And the design is for it to be a community contribution so we can benefit and expand it. So Go check it out and use it. The Linux of AI. Go open source. Thanks, everybody. Until next time. Bye-bye. Generation AI is part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you're going to like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing weekly, and we've got a wide range of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed leaders and professionals like you find their next big idea. They feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Seth O'Dell, Jenny Lee Fowler, Brian Gross, and many of your favorite leaders in higher ed. 
Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform that's helping institutions all over the country create meaningful, personalized, and engaging connections with their prospects and students. Learn more at element451.com.